Okay, so it's 2019, you're either a new artist or you still are struggling to break through on SoundCloud. Maybe you haven't hit that first hundred or first thousand or even first 10,000. And in my opinion, SoundCloud is still going to be super valuable. So this video is all about how you can gain traction and gain followers on SoundCloud in 2019. Let's go. So it's 2019 and streaming is becoming more and more popular for music. There's SoundCloud, there's Spotify, there's Apple Music, there's all these different platforms. However, in my opinion, SoundCloud is still one of the most vital ones because in a lot of ways, it's still the only kind of social network of music. You have Spotify, you have all these other ones, but SoundCloud is the only one where you can really comment, communicate, uh, interact with your fans, interact with artists you want to message and be in contact with. And I still think SoundCloud is still very valid, still very good. And, you know, who knows, two months from now, six months from now, they could figure their stuff out and they could still become one of the most popular platforms for music, especially underground music. So let's just get into these 10 tips. Now, the first one doesn't have to do with SoundCloud itself, it has to do with you and it's quality. The quality of your music is going to be absolutely vital for standing out on SoundCloud. SoundCloud, you have to just dig through a constant pile of crap. And in my opinion, the only music that is going to continuously hook people in is high quality music. Now, I'm not saying you have to be Skrillex or Flume or Diplo or, you know, any of these levels of musicians. But what I recommend doing is listen to listening to your favorite artists, artists you aspire to sound like or you think you sound like and really objectively try and look at it and see if you are 80 percent as good as they are. I would say to succeed on SoundCloud and to stand out, you really have to be at least 80 percent as good as the people you aspire to sound like. And if you don't. Honestly, I think you'll just get forgotten and your music will quickly fall into the pile and you're not going to stand out and it's just going to be a lot of effort when I think spending that time on social media could be better spent on trying to grow your skills versus that. So step one, before you really even think about getting yourself on SoundCloud, I would make sure your music is about 80% as good as those you aspire to sound like quality so you can put your best foot forward. Now, tip number two goes into the whole quality versus quantity debate, and it comes down to quantity or more so consistency. I think consistency is very important. A song has a specific lifespan, and it's actually starting to get shorter and shorter. But what I mean by that and what I mean by the lifespan of a track is say you put out a new track. Well, over the course of, say, a month, and even as short as now, three weeks, even two weeks, even one week in the day and age of music we live in, it kind of has a lifespan where you gain all this traction, maybe you get YouTube support, blog support, support from your friends, you gain this new attention for it, you gain these followers, you gain these fans, you gain these listens, and it reaches a peak, and then it quickly, steeply starts to cut off and the track quickly becomes forgotten for the most part in this day and age of music, unless of course it's a masterpiece and it's a, it's a very standout song. But for the most part, music's just gonna go up, have a lifespan and it's gonna go down. Now, if you're putting one song out every two months, you're not gonna stand out and you're gonna quickly be forgotten. Just think about you as a listener, how many new artists are always on your radar, new music, and how many of them to you really stand out and are ones you keep going back to and very likely it's only the ones where they're constantly in your face constantly providing you with a new song and and for me personally i'm just speaking personally here it takes about four to five songs from an artist for that to kind of click in my head and be like oh i like this artist this is an artist i want to follow and pay attention to say for example I don't know, an artist I, I recently fell in love with would be like Bad Computer, uh, who releases a lot on Monster Cat. I heard one song of his, I really liked it, and I gave him a follow in the hopes that maybe he'll put out more stuff that I'll really like. 
And luckily I followed him around the time where he started to consistently release on Monster Cat probably once a month. And those songs were just constantly on my radar, like good new song, good new song, good new song. And that solidified him to me as one of my favorites. While there could be another artist where they put out a single and it's like one of the best singles I've ever heard. But if they don't put something out, I'm going to quickly forget about them and not consider them one of my favorites. One of those go-to artists, one of those artists that if they played in my town, I'd want to go see. Or one of those artists that I'd follow on SoundCloud for more, I would eventually go through my SoundCloud followers and be like, oh, I got the single from this person. I'm not going to follow them anymore. Unfollow. So you need a really good balance of quality and consistency. And it might take a while to get to that point where your skills are at the point where you can write at least one quality song and release it per month. But I recommend the quicker you can do that, the quicker that consistent that that lifespan can build on itself because once your track hits the peak of its plays and follows, then you drop that next track and every all those new people who just start paying attention to you are going to listen to that new song and it's going to keep going up. You're going to keep going up instead of kind of getting a bunch of new followers and some of them disappearing or not interacting with your work anymore. So number two was consistency. Now, number three is a little less useful in 2019. But I still wouldn't rule it out, and that is download gates. Now, if you don't know what a download gate, a download gate is a website and a a technique that you can use to set up a download for your song, where when someone downloads your song, instead of asking for money, you ask for some sort of social currency. And that could be a SoundCloud follow, that could be a Facebook like. And in this case, because we're doing SoundCloud follows and SoundCloud growth, you would do it for a SoundCloud follow, maybe even a repost, maybe even a comment, because a bunch of comments on your track will make it look really good and give social proof to the fact that your track is worth listening to and people like it. So those are going to be websites like the Artist Union, Tone Den, Hive, uh, Fangate, there's, there's so many right now. They're so easy to set up and it's it's really as easy as you set up a download gate for a track, go to any of those websites, easy breezy. And then when someone wants to download your track, they'll have to like it, repost it, follow you. And hopefully that repost and that follow will either lead them to listening to more of your music in the future or that repost getting the attention of others. And the reason I say it's still valuable is even though the average listener is probably just streaming your track, putting it in a playlist, putting it in their favorites, DJs and people who still like to collect songs on their computer, primarily DJs, are still going to want to download your music. I know myself, whenever I have a show coming up, I probably download like 100 new songs and I have to go through those download gates pretty much for every single one. I, I buy very little music or maybe a third to a quarter while most of the music I'm still going through a download gate to acquire. So this is going to be super beneficial because you're going to get reposts, you're going to get likes, you're going to get favorites, maybe even comments. And it can take a track that has no traction. And if it's good enough, people will download it and it will get traction. So I recommend still using download gates in 2019. Now, the next technique is using download gates for stuff other than music and providing values. And what I mean by that is, yes, you'll have DJs that use download gates, but that's still very few. However, one way download gates are still really valuable is to provide some sort of value for your audience or prospective audience, be it through a sound, uh, through a sample pack. Maybe you write a blog that can only be accessed through a download gate. So what you can do is you can create a really desirable item, property of some sort, sample packs, presets, um, inside look video I it could you can get really creative with it and you can actually put it behind a download gate where someone has to use a download gate to access it and this is actually how I got a lot of my following and how Cymatics the company I used to work for gained a ton of their following is where if you want to download a sample pack if you want to download presets something like that you have to use a download gate or stems if someone wants to remix your song or something like that they have to use this download gate. And for me, that gets way more downloads than a song to a download gate. 
So tip number four is provide value for your audience and put that behind a download gate where they have to then follow you, repost it or something like that. Now, tip number five for growing your SoundCloud is going to be repost trading or uh, joining repost circles. Now, there's two sort of different things here. The first is repost trading, where you can go to websites with, I think, like repost network or things like that, where you can essentially put your song up on there and you can kind of get ask for a bid, essentially, that where someone can offer to repost it for you reposting one of their songs and the reason i say bid because a lot of times it has to do with how many followers you have so like i have a soundcloud with 15k so i can ask an account with 15k to do a trade for example and then i just you know select their song hit yes make an offer if we agree i don't even have to do any of the work it'll actually manually do it for you for 24 hours so if you're really new to soundcloud using these websites to just create all these repost trades and get songs to repost is really useful because reposting on SoundCloud is, in my opinion, one of the best things and worst things about it. In my opinion, it kind of ruined SoundCloud because it kind of ruined your feed and it ruined the cleanliness of just following people you like. However, I'm not going to avoid the elephant in the room. I'm going to take advantage of it. So I'm going to use websites like that to set up these repost networks. Now, on top of that, you can also set up repost networks with your friends. If you have friends who are all producers, create like a, a group chat, a discord, something like that, where every time one of you releases a song, all of you are going to repost it periodically. And that way you can join forces with your friends and everyone gets each other's support every time you put out a song because it doesn't look like it's going anywhere and it can be just a great way to start snowballing and get the attention you want that you yourself may not have with a brand new or very small SoundCloud. The next tip is going to be using your other social media. Now, this may seem very obvious, but using your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Snapchat, to push a song when it uh, when it's out is very beneficial. Now, my main word of, word of advice here, though, is to grow those social me your social media separately and not just making those a self promotional platform. You want to give people a reason to follow your Facebook, a reason to follow your Instagram, a reason to follow your Twitter. So you want to be providing value content on those platforms that isn't just always here's my SoundCloud link, here's my SoundCloud link because nothing's going to get you unfollowed or liked quicker. However, that being said, those social medias are going to be a great way to just get that initial traction, especially your personal Facebook account, because your other social media is probably going to be as small as your SoundCloud or within the same range, but your personal Facebook has your friends and they already interact with you and communicate with you. Not to mention, you can private message people. You can private message your best friends, give them a song, ask them for support. And if you're fairly new to growing a SoundCloud, fairly new to uh, growing social media overall, your friends are very likely to support you. Now, someone like me who's been at it for five years, if I sent people links, they're so tired of seeing it. So it's probably not very effective. But this is, tutorial isn't for people who have been on SoundCloud for five years. This is people... Who are just growing it some people who are pretty much starting 2018 2019 so use your other social media to grow your soundcloud the next tip is going to be youtube promotional channels to grow your soundcloud so on youtube there are tons of channels that exclusively upload other people's music and what you can do every time you put out a song is you can connect with these channels. They usually have submission emails in their about section, collect dozens of them in a spreadsheet, email them all personally one by one. And even if just one picks it up and they include your download gate in the description, say your song got a thousand to 10,000 plays on one of these channels, which is very realistic. You know, some of these channels can do very well. And let's even just be conservative. Let's say you got a thousand plays. Even if 1% of that thousand decided to actually download the song, so one in a hundred plays, that's still 10 more followers than you had the day before. And 10 followers is a big deal. You shouldn't take that for granted. So 
using YouTube uh, promotional networks to actually get your music heard is very beneficial. And I recommend using a promo strategy and having a promo plan every time you release a song or maybe you're hitting them up two weeks before, you're telling them, hey, my song's coming out this date, would you be interested? You're starting to communicate with these people and find out who they are on a personal level, building connections with them. YouTube is still a very valid way of promoting music in 2019, and I still highly recommend it, especially with YouTube music becoming a thing, where now people will actually be listening to and streaming music through YouTube music specifically, and then if they ever choose to download it, or see your name and like it, it'll probably convert however many, even however little, will convert to followers on SoundCloud. The next tip is gonna be joining the community. So one of the things I was preaching in the beginning that I like about SoundCloud is it's still very much a social network. You're still very much communicating, reposting, commenting, private messaging, all these things. And if you join the community and you start to find artists and participate in their work, they're so much more likely to check yours out. Now, I'm not recommending to go to, you know, a huge producer and spam their song with comments to check out your work, but I recommend finding musicians around your level and giving them really constructive, creative, or kind feedback that you truly mean. Listen to their music, Tell them what you liked about it. Tell them what you think. Maybe check out a couple of their songs. Don't ever ask them to check out yours, but just be a part of the community and participate in their work. And you're more likely to build a community and have people to start to connect with yours. One of my best friends in the world, Sam Winter, him and I actually met on SoundCloud and he's actually from Ottawa. And this was back when we both started and I was doing just that every day. I was like grinding, I was just like finding music and I was participating, I was communicating. He was one of them, we started private messaging. Years later, he moved to live with me in Vancouver and we started a business, eventually worked for Cymatics and lived together for like a year and a half. So you never know, you know, being part of the community is a great way to just start to build your inner circle and just really grassroots connect and build a community from the ground up. And lastly, I recommend branding. And when I say branding, I mean really perfecting how your SoundCloud looks. You want really clean links, a really clean bio, taking advantage of the image and the header on top of it, having a really good name that's really easy for people to search and remember, memorable song names that are probably related, and ideally even a consistent sound or style. Now, if you're still a really new musician, you may still be finding that, so don't hurt yourself and beat yourself up too much about finding that. However, I just really recommend the sooner you build a brand, you build a consistent sound, a style, an aesthetic, something that really sticks in people's minds when they see it, it's gonna help people want to follow you and will recognize your song in their feed and are more likely to check it out again later. So there we go, guys. That was 10 tips on how you can grow a SoundCloud in 2019. I still think SoundCloud is very valid. And even if you're just starting from ground zero now, it's never too late. And there's still a lot of tips and tricks you can get to get that first 100, first 1,000, even first 10,000 followers on SoundCloud. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this tutorial. I know it's different than my typical music production tutorial. So if you liked it, let me know. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. My name's Kermody. Thanks again. And I'll be back soon with another video. Peace.